It seems like we can't get away from this topic of flat tap at lifters, but I'm going to show you something today that I didn't show you in the other videos we did on lifters, and that is the crown, and we're going to measure these today. So the last couple of videos I've done on camshafts and, and flat tap at lifters, I've gotten a lot of comments on that they've seen or read or heard that lifters today don't have the right crown on it. And it's kind of an oddball statement to make because there's you, you can't just talk about crown without talking about the taper on the camshaft. They go together like peanut butter and jelly and mac and cheese, Batman and Robin, George and Wheezy. They go together. Um, so you can't say that I don't definitively think you can say that the, the crown is bad on a lifter without at least referencing back to the taper on the cam and the two should match up. And yes, there is some things that get excessive with it, but it's really difficult to make a statement that, well, all today all lifters aren't ground correctly, and that's the reason why they're failing. So we're going to put a little bit of that to rest today. I've got uh, a couple of lifters here um, from some common manufacturers, and we're just going to measure these off the shelf now. Some of these were ones, lifters we used in the other videos uh, that we already labeled. There's the Crower, Summit brand, Melling, uh, Seal Power, a uh, new one by Howard's that I didn't have. We have a GM AC Delco uh, lifter, the Comp DLC, and then uh, the Comp Pro Magnum lifter. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, set up the table here, uh, get the gauge calibrated, and then we will start measuring these out to see exactly what the, the crown is on these lifters. Part of the conversation of crown and taper is the rest of the conditions that affect that lifter operation. How it's ground, is it a pinpoint head like we talked about in the past or a nice swirl pattern? Is it got the right chamfer on it? Is it getting in the most surface area on the low? Big, big issue. Lifter bore clearance is one that we've talked about quite a bit, but if the bores are worn, you won't get the proper oiling and the proper function of that lifter within uh, the bore to facilitate the rotation of the lifter on the lobe. That's a huge one. Your machinist has to measure that and has to tell you what that spec is and how close or how far off those bores are. It's one thing that doesn't get talked about enough. These engines are... They're not 5 or 10 years old anymore. They're 40, 50, 60 years old. And those bores do wear, just like when a piston bore is out of spec. What do you do? You bore it, you put an oversized piston in it, and you tighten up the clearance on it. And it's the same with lifter bores. They just don't get enough consideration where you're talking about the proper uh, valve train operation. And I believe it's one of the major issues that causes a lot of the cam failures today. The lifter alignment on the lobe is also another big one. Your machinist has to verify that you've got good alignment and you've got good surface area on the lobe uh, of the cam. And if they don't check that for you and you just arbitrarily throw it into the engine, you're going to get what you get. Sometimes it's not right and sometimes it's catastrophic. So proper formulated oil, we've talked about that. And your concoction off the shelf uh, with off the shelf oil and an additive is not the right one get a good formulated oil to, to do it right and really lastly i don't think it's a lot of you know the the quality of the lifters have gone down i think they've probably suffered a little bit just given that they're being pushed out of existence everything has gone roller that means the manufacturers that make these are concentrating more on roller stuff uh, but i think if you were to check the hardness on camshafts and lifters you'd find that they're probably not that far out of spec and um, it's all the conditions we just explained that are more uh, more crazy so let's go ahead and get the test stand set up and then uh, uh, we'll start measuring the crown on these lifters so we know what they are one last thing before we get started here are the lifters that we're going to be measuring today again i think it's a pretty good list uh i added a few more since we did the last uh, video stuff that wasn't in or wasn't in stock before was today. I'm buying these lifters individually. I, I can't afford to buy a 16 uh, uh, lifter set to to do all this stuff and and show it all to you. So these were all just singles that I purchased uh, uh, directly from Summit or Jag. So um, we'll go ahead and set up test stand and then we'll start working through there, measure it, and start recording where we're at. Let me quickly walk you through how we're going to do this. I've got a surface plate here that's been leveled. I've got a fixture to hold the lifter, and then we've got the gauge that will show us uh, what the crown is on the lifter. So essentially how we're going to measure that is we're going to start in the center of the lifter, 
uh, and then go out to the edge and it will tell us what the, the difference is. In this case, uh, since I've zeroed it out on all of them in the center, uh, it'll be a negative number. It'll tell us how far it drips, dips down uh, and that will tell us what the, uh, uh, the crown is on this lifter. And then we'll just repeat them for all the ones we have. We'll record it and then we'll take a look at the results at the end. We'll kind of summarize it up. So now that I get this one uh, set, let me refixture the or reset the camera and uh, we'll get started measuring. We do have to be a little careful here. That gauge is very sensitive. You can see it's already uh, changed a little bit. So any little movement, uh, any touch on the gauge, uh, any movement on the lifter, it's going to pick it up. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll set it to zero in the center and then uh, let it rest, make sure that's what we're doing, and then we'll get it out to the edge and then uh, let it settle, and then uh, we'll take the measurement. Okay, this is the AC Delco lifter. And it looks like we're pretty spot on. That's about a thousandth and a half, uh, which is typically what the GM lifters always are, no matter what it is. So let's get that one written down. Okay, move on to the next one. This is the Comp Pro Magnum lifter. And we are spot on with that as well too. Here is the Comp DLC. Okay. This is the Crower lifter. Okay. Here is the Howard's lifter. Okay. Moving on to the Melling lifter. Okay. This is the seal power lifter. This one has a horrible chamfer on it. Okay. Last but not least, this is the summit lifter. Another bad chamfer on this one. Okay. Let's talk about the results here because they're fairly consistent, I guess, with what I thought they were going to be. Uh, some of them are farther off than I thought also. Um, what you didn't see is off camera is I didn't just measure this once and then call it good. Um, all of these I measured five times. This is the uh, generally not really the average. Some of these uh, change just a little bit, uh, but for the most part, this is the number that I got every single time. The only one that varied a little bit was the Crower. Uh, I had a little bit issue with that getting that one down, but uh, out of those five tries, uh, four of them were at that uh, um, that measurement and uh, that one outlier that was at 15, but I'm sh quite sure that was me. Uh, again, that's a very sensitive instrument. Uh, you can't rock or, or put a lot of pressure on the table because it will adjust the level of the fixture uh, and that uh, gauge picks up everything. So it's pretty cool to, to kind of play with that and see how it all works. But that, that thousand, thousand and a half, uh, which we're getting, um, you know, in the Comp DLC, the Pro, uh, Pro Magnum, the AC Delco, Crower, uh, those are really consistent with what I assumed that they were. And I'm going to be very honest with you. I've never done this before. Not with that level of equipment. I bought 
um, a new gauge that would read a little bit better, uh, that was digital, that was easier for you all to see. And uh, I've had the stand for uh, uh, quite a while now to, uh, to try to have a, a very good calibration table to start with. The ones that surprised me are the ones that were really at the end of it. Now, we did this in alphabetical order. Uh, I didn't really, you know, have any... Uh, set preconceived notion in the only one that I really wanted to hold off to the end was a DLC to see where that was at uh, because we've talked about that quite a bit as being uh, one of the solutions to some of the issues that we're having uh, with flat tap and lifters but uh, just measurement order for the most part I think I screwed up the pro magnum and DLC doesn't matter but we tried to go right down the line the ones at the end here the ones that kind of caught me off guard a little bit the Howard's one I don't know that I like that that much uh, crown on it. Again, I think the OE, um, AC Delco here in this uh, uh, instance, I think that's where they were always at. I think that's where they really liked it. Um, obviously, again, the, the taper on the camshaft makes a big deal. But that thousandth to thousandth and a half of crown, I think that's really where they wanted to be and the Delco proved right out and all of these really you know even in the Crower at a thousandth and the, and the Comp DLC at a thousandth I'm not uh, I don't have any issue with that I think that is really right within where most manufacturers and experts I guess would agree is probably the best range for a flat tap of lifter as long as it matches up with the cam uh, uh, lobe as well too the ones that surprise me are the ones here at the bottom. Now, um, the Howard's is off a little bit. I'm not really happy about that. The Summit one, I actually honestly expect that to be the worst out of all of these based on what we saw uh, when we did the visual inspection of these on the, a couple videos ago. Uh, the Seal Power one was pretty bad. The Melling being at, at that, I don't know that I would be comfortable enough of, of putting that Melling uh, lifter on something without scrapping it, starting over, measuring and verifying the taper on the cam, and then matching a better lifter up with it. Um, I am assuming that the melling cams are probably grounded on the taper as well. It's something we would have to do in the future. I don't have uh, uh, melling cam cores laying around to, to look at all that, but uh, the results on those last four are very surprising. I'm not I'm not happy with any of them. Those, all of those I would consider um, either resurfacing those or uh, starting over with something else. Not something that I was expecting. What did we learn from all this? And that's really the, the big takeaway from all this is really, I think what it boils down to is again, all the things we talked about, the crown on the lifter has to match the taper on the camshaft. You can't just, well, you can, you can do whatever you want, but you can't just take a, well, I'm going to run this camshaft because I've heard it's had less failures and I'm going to run this lifter because I think it's a better lifter. If these don't match, if the taper and the crown don't match, you're going to run into issues regardless. And then you're just going to end up blaming the manufacturer when in reality, it wasn't the manufacturer's fault. It's the fact that they're mismatched parts. Talk about that all the time with carburetors and intakes and camshafts for what you're trying to do and how much power you're trying to make and the drivability and all that. You can't just throw a bunch of a uh, combination of parts together and expect them all to work. And in this case where something is so sensitive like a, a lifter anymore uh, and a flat tap and valve train, you have to be very careful in how you do this. Now, all the other same things apply. You have to check the clearance on the lifter body uh, and the, the, the block to make sure that it's correct. Um, if the lifter bore is off and it's worn, it's oblonged, whatever the case may be, I don't care what brand you put in there. Now you may put another brand in and it may survive, but you're going, you're playing Russian roulette at that point. And then all the other things we've talked extensively about most of these lifters here on the bench. I did a couple videos on, um, you know, looking at the swirl pattern on the top and, you know, the different types of those. We talked quite a bit about the chamfer and how it affects how much, uh, uh, play or how much uh, space that it has uh, on the lobe and contact to bear the load. 
Um, all of those things are supremely critical, but today I just want to concentrate on the crown so you could kind of understand what those look like. And really, uh, I would think any good machine shop should be able to do that for you. If you buy whatever brand of cam and lifters and you say, hey, look, I just want to make sure before I put it in there, can you measure the crown on the lifter? Can you measure the taper on the camshaft so I know what those numbers are and we can at least discuss it? Um, that's not a bad thing. And again, always knowing what the uh, the clearance is on the lifter. I think that is probably the biggest thing that we're running into today. I don't know. I, I've said in the past that I think the quality of the lifters have changed a little bit because all of these manufacturers um, that make all of these lifters and probably all the ones on this table, are, that's probably only four manufacturers really, uh, they've all moved on. The roller uh, cam stuff started way, way back decades ago. It really makes them more money to produce them. It's more volume. It's less changeover on machine and setup time. Uh, and flat tap and lifters just don't put that much money into the bank at the end of the day. So financially, it makes more sense to continue for um, everyone to continue to push towards a roller setup. I know it's more expensive. I know it's not what some people want, but really at the end of the day, technology has moved on. You may have loved your Apple iPhone one, but we're on 15 or 27 or whatever we are now. The technology is long gone. So at some point in time, you have to readjust and, and re, uh, change how you're going to do things. So I hope that gave you a little bit of insight of what's going on, at least with these uh, common lifters. Um, again, I, I just tried to look for a pretty broad mix of them. Uh, and these are just all singles that I was able to buy off the shelf. If you have any other ones you think I should have tested, drop it down in the comments below. I'd be happy to address it uh, and maybe I'll get my hands on it. I keep saying that this is the last flat tap cam video we're going to do, but uh, I have a bad feeling that at some point in time, we're probably just going to end up having to do another one. So like you said, if you got any questions, don't hesitate, leave them down below. And uh, yeah, um, we'll just keep playing with this, but uh, keep all of those things in mind. You know, getting a flat tap cam to survive is not impossible these days. You just have to be more diligent in the machine work the setup and make verifying that all the parts work together. If you don't do that, it's a roll of the dice and half the time you're going to win and sometimes you're going to lose. So anyway, I hope your uh, break-in goes well if whatever you're working on and uh, you've looked at spring pressures and cams and, and tapers and crown and all of those things that we've talked about in this very uh, long series now and uh, hopefully it gave you enough information to make a good decision. We'll catch you guys on the next one. We'll see you.